G'day everybody, we're outside today and we're talking once again about Ram trucks. Now what we're talking today specifically, it doesn't necessarily really relate to Ram trucks, it could relate to any truck or wagon. We're talking about transmission temperatures. Now I did a video a little while ago where I serviced my transmission and I spoke about some additional things that we fitted to the transmission uh, and one of them included a, a, T, uh, a T fitting in the hotline of the transmission where I was going to put a transmission temperature sensor in to read live uh, transmission temperature. Now uh, having that running for a good while now, I did a trip last week that reminded me of some things that you probably want to keep in mind if you're thinking I want to put a transmission temperature sensor in my, uh, in my transmission with a gauge in the, in the truck or in the wagon or whatever it might be, uh, where should I put it? Because there are different schools of thought about it. You know, do I put it in the transmission pan? Uh, do I put it in the, in the hotline? Where do I put it? And there's different people that will advocate for different things. Now, what I chose to do in my last video, I also fitted a uh, aftermarket transmission pan. And the principal reason I did that was because I wanted to get a drain plug because the 48RE in this truck has a service interval and having a service interval means you have to drain the fluid, you have to take the filter out, uh, and it didn't have a drain plug and it was just an awful mess, a horrible omission by Dodge to not have a drain plug in it. So I got an after aftermarket pan, um, principally for that reason. And when I bought the, um, the aftermarket pan, I just watched for a while, a cheap one came up that evidently someone hadn't used. Um, Bought that, fitted it. When I went to fit it, I noticed it had a transmission, um, a spot for a transmission sensor, temperature sensor in the side of the pan. And I went, oh geez, if I'd known that, I probably wouldn't have bought the T-fitting to go on the hotline. Now, I've revised my thoughts on that a little bit uh, after some recent events, and I'll, um, that's what we're here to talk about today. So you could put it in the, in the pan yourself. The thing you want to know about it is that a lot of trucks, certainly in this truck, but not just limited to this truck, is there is a, ten, a, a transmission fluid uh, temperature sensor in the pan already, and it has an alert value. So if the, if the transmission fluid goes over a certain temperature rating, you'll throw a warning light on your dash, and then you'll have to decide on what you're gonna do with that, if anything. Um, probably a good idea to back it off or to pull over or whatever. But anyway, it's going to throw a warning light. So if you have a transmission, an additional sensor in the pan to read that data for you and tell you what the temperature is, if, it, if you know when that, uh, when that level is and when it's going to cut and throw that, uh, throw that code, one thing that could be a problem for you is that if it starts to approach it in the transmission pan and you go, whoa, better back off, probably with all that hot fluid still spinning around in the transmission, going through your transmission cooler, or if you don't have a transmission cooler in your, in your car or truck, straight back into the pan. When you decide to back off because it's getting close, it's probably gonna to continue to heat up for a while and that may still throw the code. Now that's fine, you might just go, okay, well I've got to back off earlier, but if your normal operating temperature while towing is you know, at a level where you go, you know, well, I haven't got a huge buffer before I hit the code, um, or, you know, by the time it starts to rise, I'm already going to, you know, probably going to get close to or, or throw, the, throw, a, throw a warning light by the, time I, um, by the time I back off the throttle. Then you might have, a, you might have something that you want to think about there. But anyway, uh, what happened uh, to us, we didn't have any problems with it, but we've had a couple times now. Um, we came back from uh, the coast in the eastern coast of Australia going inland and we had to come over the mountains and we came up a protracted, a long and very steep gradient and I was watching my trans transmission temperature rise as we, as we kept going up and up and up and up, very steep gradient um, and the transmission temperature out of the hotline got quite hot. Now, I didn't throw a code, transmission pan temperature okay, but the hotline did get very hot. Now that alerted to me one of the reasons why you should at least consider if you're going to put a transmission temperature in your truck, why you tap into the hotline is because it tells you exactly what's going on. 
Now the hotline, what it is, is your transmission is going to be taking fluid out of the transmission pan. You know, your torque converter is going to be using, uh, using fluid. Your transmission is going to use fluid. When it's working hard, it's going to generate heat. And that hot fluid is going to get expelled from the transmission and it'll either go back to the pan if you don't have a transmission cooler or it'll be sent to the transmission cooler to cool it down before it goes back into the pan again. So that hot line coming out of the transmission is going to be your most accurate reflection of what your transmission is doing at any moment. Uh, now that's something to consider if you're buying, uh, if you're choosing a transmission temperature gauge. So let's say your transmission, uh, you know, your transmission temperature warning light's going to be triggered at say, I don't know, just at a figure, let's say 230 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, if you have a gauge that goes to 240 and you put it into your hotline, your hotline is probably going to exceed that 240 temperature. So you want to get a gauge that can, otherwise you're going to go off the bottom of your gauge. And, yeah, you're going to be guessing how hot your temperature is or you're going to do damage to your gauge. Uh, so, you know, take that into consideration to get a gauge that's going to be sufficient to do the job if you're tapping into the hotline because the hotline will have a higher running temperature than what your transmission pan uh, will run. And you can get those specifications from your particular manufacturer in terms of when the warning light is triggered in the truck so that you can, you know, you can factor that in, in what gauge you choose to get. So anyway, um, if you've got a uh, OBD, uh, a Bluetooth OBD reader, uh, which I have in this truck and on my, uh, you can look at my other videos for OBD reader information and review of the head unit I have in here, which is an Xtrons unit. It's an Android operating system and it comes with uh, the paid version, the pro version of a fairly well-known OBD app. Uh, so you can bring that up, you plug your Bluetooth OBD reader, which is in this truck all the time, and it's constantly feeding data as long as I've got the app running. And I can put up different things on the dash. So if you've got, if you've got something in your vehicle, if you've got a Bluetooth OBD reader, um, and it can read your transmission temperature, then you can have your transmission pan temperature, and if you have a hotline uh, fitted, uh, sensor fitted, you can, you can look at both of them. That would be the ideal. Now, whether you can do that with your, you might have a factory gauge. Um, some trucks do have a, a transmission temperature and it's factory gauge, not many, but some do. Uh, or you can get access to the data being relayed from your transmission temperature sensor. You can watch that. And then if you have a, a gauge in the hotline, you can compare the two. And when the hotline's getting hotter and the transmission temperature hasn't started to move yet, you know it's gonna start bumping upwards. And between the two, you should get a well, a well comprehensive um, view of what your transmission is doing. But certainly, um, your early warning system, the T fitting in your hotline is is not a bad not a bad thing. So the T fitting I have in this truck comes from Glowshift in North America. Now, I'm not advocating necessarily for Glowshift specifically because there's any number of uh, manufacturers that will sell you a, a T fitting, but the one that I happen to have is from Glowshift. Uh, I purchased it from Glowshift, and for what it's worth, I, so I'm in Australia, they're in, uh, in, in the United States. I ordered the fitting, it arrived, and I've got a video detailing what I did to the transmission, but I was going to uh, service the transmission, put the new pan on, adjust the bands, put a new filter on, replace the fluid, and then I was going to put the T fitting in, I was going to do it all at once. It took me a while to get around that, so it might have been a month or more uh, that it took me uh, before I got around to doing the job. I came to do the job, make sure I've got everything I need. I opened the box to, from the Glow Shift T fitting, and there's a coupling missing, which was a bit worrying. So I contacted Glow Shift. I said, "Look, I'm really sorry. I know this was a, you know, well over a month ago, but I've only just realised that the coupling's missing. What do I do?" They said, "No problems. We'll send you another one." So, thank you, Glow Shift. That's great service. Now, you know, let he who hasn't sinned cast the first stone. You know, I've made mistakes in business. That's a mistake. You could say, oh, the mistake shouldn't have happened, but they rectified it. I'm very, very pleased about that. Thanks to Glowshift for rectifying my problem um, straight away. I had the new fitting in a week, so that's really good. So if you're, for what it's worth, you know, if you're in Australia and you, you, know, you can get concerned, oh, is this online retailer, is this international retailer reputable? I found Glowshift uh, in this circumstance very good. Stand up, guys. They sent me the new part. Uh, and I fitted it. So what you do 
is in the process of doing everything else, I just took the whole hot line off. You just, you know, you get your a flare nut spanner or you could do it with a stubby spanner perhaps. Uh, undo the fittings, take the hot line out. The instructions are very clear. You take a section out of it. It tells you how big a section to cut out of it and where to cut. You cut that section out. You put your couplings on. You put the T fitting in. You tighten it up real tight. Um, you know, real tight. Make sure it's got a, it's got some um, a crush fittings in there as well to clamp down on the um, on the transmission line. And then you reinstall it. And then you put your, your it's got the the T fitting. You put your um, new sensor into it and you're installed and then you just got to run your gauge and, and connect up your gauges and everything like that so pretty easy installation didn't have anything the instructions were uh very clear a little bit of a mongrel to get to because of you know what where transmission lines and and that uh, are the biggest uh thing about it was cutting the piece out of the out of the transmission line uh you know you do that very carefully you make sure you got it marked out because you don't want to cut that wrong and then have to buy a new transmission line Thankfully, I didn't do that, and the installation was was a okay. Um, but you know, a T fitting from whomever, um, you know, is something worth thinking about if you want to get that that most accurate data in terms of what your transmission is doing. Just something worth thinking about. So that's about it. That's what I've found the pros and cons are. If you can get data out of your factory sensor, and you can have that displayed somewhere and have that with the hotline, that would be the ultimate. You can have the two. I mean, you could run two gauges if you can't get access to the to the factory data off the sensor. You could run two gauges. You gotta house two gauges then. Uh, whether you need to do that, like it, uh, to me, you'd have to be doing some really serious towing all the time. But, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these trucks, you know, they'll, you know, you might be people carting machinery, earth moving machinery for a living. They might be carting cars for a living or you might own one and the only time it comes out of the shed is when it's pulling your humongous heavy caravan. So if all you're doing is towing and the thing doesn't come with a transmission temperature gauge, probably worth thinking about putting one in. And then in terms of where you put it, in the pan, in the hotline, this is a bit of information about why you would, why you wouldn't, and hopefully that helps you out. So just to conclude, I'll try and uh, show you where the where the T fitting is, not super interesting, but it will show you where it is. As I said, it was a little bit, it was fiddly to put in, not difficult to put in. But you know, you should be able to do it with some quality instructions. That I I didn't find it super challenging. So we'll quickly show you where the T fitting is on the transmission, and then we'll wind up today. I hope this was useful for you, and I appreciate you watching. So let's have a look at where this fitting is. Okay. So we've got an outside sunny day today. So hopefully the lighting under here is not too bad. So there's my B&M pan. If you can see that. And there, right there, there's my, um, uh, my auto meter transmission sensor going into the T-fitting and then the T-fitting going up and down. So that's where it is. I've had no leaks from it, from the pan or anything that I fitted. Um, since I fitted it, it's been absolutely fine. Um, you know, it's always parked on a concrete floor so I can keep an eye on if anything does leak, but haven't had any problems. But there's the T fitting, um, pretty, I said, fiddly to install, not difficult to install. Um, and that's the Glow Shift product um, for what it's worth. Thanks again.